going to answer questions on behalf of council. I, or I don't think Aaron will either. Um, so please raise your hand so we can just get an idea of who wants to make a comment. Okay, let's, let's begin out of here. And can please state your name and your address. I have some handouts to help everyone along with the Yes, my name is uh, Frank Frank Lisio. I live at 314 North Essex Avenue. I was asked by Sam Quinn uh, that I was going to get on the uh, agenda for Wednesday's federal council meeting. He recommended I raise my issues and uh, recommendations with the BMZ here as an appropriate um, organization to start with. I wanted to cover the current Harbor uh, Code related to garages, uh, specifically since it, you guys are the zoning and building, this is exactly the zoning and building code, uh, how it relates to the uh, garage that's being built at 316 4th Essex Avenue, and then uh, recommendations to the form based code, since you guys are looking at that, and make some recommendations there. Thank you. Just before you go on, sure. I just want to make, I want to just say something so I can make sure that you understand how we're listening. Aaron and I, and members of Borough Council, are not in a judicial role. We're in a legislative role. We're not going to be able to listen to his concern and make any ruling or make any judgment about it. We can hear him because he's our neighbor. But there's a whole separate process by which a person gets zoning approval. It's called the zoning, zoning officer. And there's a, there's a zoning hearing board, which is a separate legal entity that hears concerns of neighbors. So, we're going to listen to Frank because you're here and we want to be courteous about yes. your concern. But we have no jurisdiction over this, nor yes. uh, any, yeah, no, any ability I, to I, I about appreciate it. that, Bob, explaining okay. that. And also, it's just to also um, be aware, since we are creating code that's being used and interpreted, it's good to understand how is the current code being used and interpreted. So when we look at the form-based code, we understand uh, things there and, and hopefully be productive as well. So I appreciate you explaining that. Um, <coughs> just wanted to show uh, a picture from our rear yard, the Holtman's old garage from the viewpoint of our rear yard. As you can see, uh, there's a single story with a slope roof, just a half story above that, and an open view, and to the right uh, was fully open. If you look at the second page, or well, page three there, the current Holman's garage expansion that's occurring now blocks the entire rear yard, the entire floor, <coughs> and it's an additional 21 feet longer. The old garage was only 25 feet uh, wide, and it's uh, basically 2.6 feet from this uh, side yard. Um, again, we welcome anyone to come to our property, look at this directly, because the picture does not do this justice. And people have come in our yard and cannot believe that someone else would do this to their neighbor. And you were talking about gardening earlier. Forget about gardening next to uh, something like this. Uh, zoning related to the garage, specifically, Wall Street parking. Uh, this is in the zoning section. And if we read the one section that I have underlined there, this is specifically with respect to dwellings which are in existence prior to 1986, which this house and garage certainly were. A garage may be built within one of the side yards or the rear yard if entirely separated from the main building. So again, it's one side yard or rear yard. So you're not allowed to do both. And if you choose side yard, since there's more than one side yard, you can only do one. So it's pretty clear that you can't do a side and rear and only allowed to go into one side yard. So if we look at the next page five, I am one, I should put my glasses on. But the garage expansion at 316 North Essex, the gray area shows the expansion. Uh, the part that says garage was the original garage. Um, so I, to make it easier for you, I put yellow to show you where the property lines are, pink to show you where the eight foot setback is, and then anywhere between there that's being built, I uh, put two rectangles in blue, which shows that the expansion is actually occurring into two side yards, which is not allowed without a variance, of which one was not uh, granted. So a new garage is actually being expanded two side yard setbacks, the variance is required to expand into two side yards. Bill Martin has exceeded his authority as zoning officer. Bill essentially granted a variance by saying no zoning relief was required. Only the Narbo Zoning Board has authority to grant a variance. Uh, we've also heard counter arguments that the bill has allowed others in the past to build in both a side and rear yard, which is really irrelevant to this, but it is also against the code, as you see uh, earlier. Uh, gar garages do not have proper zoning or this garage is not a proper zoning for the code and the building permit should not have been granted without a variance. 
but the borough office and solicitor are allowing the garage to be built anyway. Moving on to the garage in terms of area and size of the garage allowed, I agree with the member um, of the borough that on June 14, 2004, we did move to the Uniform Construction Code, the Ordinance 902, which was implemented in the code as follows. And even if you read the UCC, it talks about borough ordinances that are in fact um, will supersede the UCC if it's more restrictive. So it's been implemented here in our own code, Chapter 50, the building construction, uh, under the conflicting regulations. So it is a supplement to basically the UCC. That's the state of Pennsylvania ordinances, the borough, dot, dot, dot. And where this chapter imposes greater restrictions upon the construction use area or height of buildings, it requires larger open spaces imposed by such law, dot, 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 the provisions of this chapter shall control. So within that same chapter, there's definitions in a private garage is defined as a building accessory to a dwelling in store for not more than three motor vehicles with an area of not more than 660 square feet. Thus, the restrictions of not more than three vehicles and a max of 660 square feet does control. So the max the garage can be 660. Now, to me, this makes sense. Due to the size of the lots in Arbor, these are all very small lots. This restriction on the, was imposed in the code to limit the size of garages to this size and area, which made sense because just because we went to the UCC, we didn't throw the baby away with the bathwater. We said, hey, we still want for our size lots, we're not in Wayne or wherever that have huge properties, we're on top of each other. So we had people had forethought ahead of time to say, let's limit the size of the garages in our neighborhood. So the footprint of the new garage actually has an area of 1,211 square feet and exceeds the size allowed by the Narberth Code. Argument used by the borough and solicitor are that, well, this is greater than 1,000 square feet, so the UCC applies. But for the UCC itself, our borough restriction still applies, and the code does not let you get larger than 660 square feet. I mean, as an engineer, this could not be more simplistic. And the arguments to me are quite, um, I would draw my comment on. Um, borough office and solicitor allowing the garage to continue to be built anyway. Now, having the code implemented properly, regarding implementing the current code, to me, the code is very clear. There's no interpretation needed. It's straightforward. Uh, I was recommended that we go to the zoning board, as Bob was just suggesting. There's an alternate um, structure uh, that's in place since the solicitor and borough won't issue a stop work order. Now, to me, when you investigate, it costs $750 to go there, which doesn't make sense just to follow the code, as simplistic as it is, makes no sense to me that I'd have to go spend money to just have the code implemented properly. Um, you know, and it does surprise me as Mr. Holton, as somebody that's on the planning commission, would um, do this to a neighbor and question how we would be planning the community and stuff. Now, Mr. Walco is interested in knowing if anyone has declined a garage project due to setback and every size issue. So please let me know. I'd be more than willing to collect that information and we can present that to Mr. Walco as well. So on the last thing, I'd like to make some recommendations with regards to the form based code. Uh, I'd like to retain the definition of a private garage that's not more than three cars and 660 square feet maximum as in our current code. It makes sense if you take 660 and divide that by three, you get 220 square feet per car. Now, there's another requirement that says the minimum should be 200 per car. That's both in our current code and if you look at the UCC. So you're looking at anywhere between, for a two-car garage, which was the existing garage there, it was 405 square feet. It makes sense, it was between 400 and 440. So, I mean, it was straightforward. So really, what should have been only allowed is to add another car, which is just another uh, lot size. Now, what we would also like to point out uh, is to not allow massing or bulking as was done to ourselves. As you can see from that picture, if you go in our backyard, the picture does not do it justice. It's just one wall that you're looking at of uh, a structure. And you're talking about at least keeping things three feet. This is 2.6 feet back from the property line. You can see nobody would think that someone would do that, but this is why you got to look at the code very closely because someone will and has done this. Um, you know, we don't live in the city. We know we, the current structures are there already, and we have houses close to each other. But once you start having 
buildings on either side, then on the back of you and stuff, all of a sudden, you're totally enclosed. You might as well start putting up plays and doing plays for everybody. So, also another thing, a question was asked, I thought was a good question in terms of heights. Um, right now, there's a, the height restriction is 35 feet, basically, three and a half stories or whatever it is. Um, I would say that that be reduced to one and a half stories. I don't know how many feet that it was, but basically like the same height of the old garage that was there, I think is reasonable. A garage really should be used for cars. Um, I would restructure the sentence this is that say one, to be very clear that any number above this is not permitted. Two is greater than one in what I've learned in school and stuff. But based on the arguments that were presented back, um, it, it was not uh, very clear. I'd also restructure the sentences with or to be very clear that that does not mean both. Because we've gotten where it says side yard or rear yard that, well, or is really an end. You can do both. And so I'd say let's restructure that because or does not mean and, at least what I learned in school. And um, that, I do appreciate everybody's time. I understand that you guys as zoning and building officers and others that are implementing, I thought, uh, as um, Sam said, to come here and uh, share, at, at least there. And I think there was also some issues with the process and stuff that we can maybe shed some light in and tighten up some stuff with regards to that. I know Sean has a lot of work moving forward in terms of um, trying to do stuff. And I respectfully uh, just wanted to present this. And I thank everyone for listening uh, to that. And if you had any comments to offer, I'd appreciate it. But um, I just want to thank you for your information here on the uh, recommendations of the form base. Because we'll have, so our committee will forward this to the Planning Commission okay. for consideration. And okay. then they can, they can look at it and think about it. And if it's if it makes sense as a modification to the form-based code in the future, they can recommend to the council that we, that we make that modification. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, the existing code has been modified probably a thousand times since it was first written in 1940. Okay. We anticipate that this code, if it's enacted, will be modified, hopefully if we're around long enough, many, many, many times in the future. And this may be, uh, this may be what you're presenting as an early modification. So yeah, now there's been a lot of really, interest. It will really be up to the planning commission if they what they make of it. Okay. So yeah, that's okay. their role. We appoint the planning commission as advisors to the council, who are people who are especially interested in matters of building and zoning. And our committee really is an administrative kind of uh, committee. But I do appreciate yeah. you coming out. And there, so we, we talk about a lot of things in the abstract here. Uh, when something happens to you, the details become very important. And so yeah. I really appreciate your your view on it in terms okay. of reading the code with an eye towards you know, how many things could be different. Yes, uh, I'm a very detailed engineer. Uh, I think that we should all, the code is set up to be followed as precisely as possible. Uh, I know in some cases there's judgment necessary because it may not be clear. I believe in this instance it's very clear. To me there's no black and white and stuff, but um, I know that in some other cases there's areas. I'm an engineer as well, and I understand that sometimes you need to make interpretations of stuff. So I do appreciate everyone listening and just um, hoping that something good will come out of this for the whole community in terms of that. Unfortunately for us, it may be too late, but um, as, as you pointed out, there are other steps that could possibly be taken. And if you have any other recommendations or steps, I'd appreciate hearing about I think that. that I think the uh, redress in front of the zoning hearing board is now, does that, does that require a cost to go there, or I have issues that it's just not following code? It's not me as saying, typically it's a homeowner saying, I disagree with the implementation of me requesting this. This is a, a separate thing saying, you have not followed the code that you're supposed to be implementing yourself. That's not really our responsibility to make sure the code is followed. It's not like we're disagreeing with how the code is written. It's a different thing, so I think it's, I guess I could propose something to the zoning board to have them interpret. I'm not even sure who the members are, I guess. I don't know. I believe, I believe the way the zoning board operates, you have to be a party to come before them. It's like a judicial board. Exactly. And they have their own solicitor. And they do have, and they do have a fee to convene. I'm not aware of any more details. Okay. That, because it's not uh, we'll have to no investigate order. further and stuff. So. Yeah. Thank you for your time, everyone. And thank you for listening.
and feel free to tell whoever, if you really want to see what it may look like, if we just allow any size or whatever, please come to our back room and really look for yourself. Bob, on the administrative side, uh, is there a way, because it could be that you said that the what we were trying to interpret was way back from the 1940s or something. I guess my issue with that has been, all through this process, why isn't there updated information for you know, citizens and residents to readily see, like, why would we be reading old code? Well, so, I mean, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect, it's a very reasonable question. It's the same question that many of us asked ourselves, like, nine years ago, when we were sitting here reading the old code together. At that time, Mary Jo Poxtis assigned the Planning Commission to read the old code and to look at how could we make sense of it, make it improve it. And, um, and that's how the form-based code was born, because the form-based code is a, it's a document that's full of visual graphics, visual information, so it's much easier to understand and, and relate to as a layperson. So because it's filled with images and diagrams and tape, charts and tables, most all of us can read. Um, and that's, that's, how it, that's how it came about. Where's the new code that's been? Yeah, where's the current the code? code? On the website. On the website. So on the your website. question is why is the old code? I mean, what, no, what I mean, I read everything that's on the website right now. So I, I, you're saying I read the current code, but it just still seems to me that. Well, what, once something is enacted into law, it's, it's the, that's the law. So unless it's revised or amended or removed, it, it remains. The law and now sometimes things can be written in a language that becomes more archaic, <coughs> terms that are only known to those of the art, you know, lawyers and things. But um, but that's those are the laws that we operate under in the borough. I still don't think that's the answer I'm trying to get at. Okay. I mean, I mean, if you're saying that everything that's on the website right now for Narborough Narborough Borough is current 